Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building Tips. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Nicole's 00 scale Hogwarts Express steam locomotive because it stopped running. So the problem with this engine is that it's completely dead. You put it on the track and it just doesn't run anymore. It used to, then it started to run really slow, and then it just didn't run at all. So I need to try to fix that. One nice thing about this engine is that all the electronics and mechanics for the engine are contained in the locomotive. The tender isn't um, really doing anything except being along for the ride, so all the work can be done in here. I'll start by removing the shell. Now normally there would be a screw right here, however on our model it's missing. So in any case, once the screw is out, you can just lift it off. So I've already determined through trial and error that this is a bad motor. Now, what I want to note up here is that there's a code on it. So what's important here is not this number on the bottom. I think that's some kind of a sequence or serial number or something. But the FK130SH, that's the actual model number. I was able to get on Amazon and I searched for FK130SH and I found a new motor. These were only about $3 each. So what I need to do is, uh, you know, take out the old motor and install this one. So first, I need to remove this bottom cover plate. There's two screws. You don't need to worry about this one here. This entire cover plate will now lift off. Or it should. There it goes. Next, and this is a little bit scary, but I'm just going to take this entire drive wheel assembly and just remove it. Just lifts right out. So this model has a split frame chassis, kind of like a lot of N-scale models. And there's three screws holding it together, so I need to take those out. So you have to be a little careful because there's these little plastic backing pieces that the screws thread into on the other side of the frame. And once the screws are out, these can fall out. So you want to make sure to keep those somewhere safe. That's what I'm talking about here is this little plastic piece. The screw threads into this. So the two outer screws are longer and the middle one is shorter. I'm not sure why they did it that way, but I just need to remember that so that I don't get these confused later. Now the two halves of the chassis will come apart. The other thing that's worth noting are these little copper springs. There's one on the lower right and one on the upper left as you're looking toward the back of the engine. And these contact the uh, metal uh, contact points on the motor. So this is how the motor gets electricity from the frame to the motor. Um, it's important not to lose these unless you were going to change the engine to DCC, in which case you'd want to take these off and insulate the motor from the frame. I'm not going to do that this time though, I just want to run the engine on DC, so I have to make sure not to lose these little springs. The other spring is right here, right by these contacts on the motor, and the motor will now just come out very easily. So the one thing about the old motor is it has a big gear on it, so I have to take that off and put it on the new motor. So I don't have a caliper handy, however I've noticed that this screwdriver blade just fits in the gap between the gear and the motor, so as long as I match that distance I think we should be fine. So to remove the gear, I'm going to use this NWSL puller tool um, and this little plate that comes with it as an adapter. Um, I'll show you how that works in a second. So the reason we need the adapter plate is because um, you have to have something that will fit between the motor and the gear, and this is thin enough. So this is the basic setup. I've got the motor, the adapter plate, and then this screw is inserted into the hole in the gear, and it's pressed against the motor shaft. Now I can take the hex wrench and start tightening this, which will push the gear off the motor. Yeah, it just cracked. That's kind of normal if they've been on there for a while. So the little pin on the screw in the puller uh, bottomed out and I wasn't able to push the gear all the way off. So I found some steel wire in my scrap box and I cut a very short piece. I'm going to put this inside the gear and then continue pushing. And it's off. So the other thing that's important on this motor are these little plastic caps. There's clear plastic caps that are on either end. Um, these are insulation. And without it, the locomotive mechanism will probably short out. So it's important to keep these and transfer them to the new motor. So this is the new motor. I've put the plastic on it. 
this uh, inner white piece was already attached to the front piece of plastic. In uh, back though they separated so I had to put this uh, together and this this white piece this inner piece actually fits inside a hole in this other plastic piece so it took a little fiddling to get this all seated the way it's supposed to be. So to press the gear onto the shaft of the new motor I've put it in a vise and fortunately this vise is small enough that um, I can position these little metal contact tabs above and below this part here so it's not going to crush those. The, uh, this part is actually pressing on the motor shaft directly so hopefully this will work. I'm using the vise to press the gear onto the motor shaft. As I mentioned before I can use the width of the screwdriver as a guide. So I'm just going until the gap gets to be about the same size as the screwdriver blade. I don't want to go too far and trap the screwdriver between the gear and the motor. So I probably should have done this already, but I hooked a couple of test leads up to the motor just to make sure that it actually works. Oh yeah, it's good. So putting this back together is basically just the reverse of disassembly. Again, the spring here has to be in the right place. There's one spring on each frame half. The motor just it's in. The spring that was in the frame is now pressing against this contact. So the label is upright just like the old motor. So before I put the screws back in I just want to make sure that everything's running as it's supposed to. So I'm just going to take my leads. Yep, and the motor's spinning. That's a good sign. Um, if the motor hadn't worked I would have had to have gone back and checked to make sure that these little springs are actually contacting the tabs on the back of the motor the way they're supposed to. Looks like everything's good so I can go ahead and put the screws in. So this next bit's a little bit tricky to show on camera. Um, these pieces, the, uh, the long rod has to go into a hole into the cylinder and then these parts here actually have to engage these guides here. So it's kind of a little tricky to get that all lined up, but um, it's really important that they get lined up properly on both sides. And then once that's done, the axle with the gear goes in the middle, and then the other two don't have gears, so those will just slide in to these other slots. All right, so as I was saying, this part, the rod, has to go in this hole in the cylinder, and then these pieces fit around the plastic. You see there's a metal piece here, and there's a metal piece on the back. It fits around these plastic guides, top and bottom. So all that has to get put back together properly. Um, took me a few tries to get it, but it can be done. I'm holding the model upside down so that the wheels don't fall out. Um, this should only really fit one way, but it's really important that this side rod that connects all three wheels together is horizontal. Otherwise the engine won't run properly. Putting the bottom cover plate back on is pretty easy. You just have to fit it back in and then tighten the screws. Uh, incidentally, this engine was prone to derailing, so I made some modifications to the uh, pilot truck, and that's in another video here on the channel if you want to see the details. All right, so now for the moment of truth. Looks like it's working. Well, it runs about as well as it ever did, so I think it's, uh, I think it's done.
So this engine's running about as well as it ever has, so I'm going to call that a success. If you like this video, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>